Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 281. April 16th, that's almost two weeks to the day after we released Wix 5. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. Yay, everybody cheer. If I had a soundboard, I'd do the whole clapping thing behind me. Um, that's awesome. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here right now, but we're glad you're watching later. Uh, if you are here, go ahead and say hi. We have a bunch of people who have already said hi. It's great to see all of you in chat. We'll talk about the Wix 5 release. It happened, just kind of yay, there it is. And then we'll jump in and talk about Wix 6 schedule and the Git strategy. It's all review, probably no new real new information in there. Um, but uh, we'll talk about, just make sure everybody's on the same page. And then we'll do issue triage. And then we'll talk about the thing that I've been, we've been working on for a while that I finally sat down and kind of put it together. More uh, will come out in other forms, but we're gonna talk about the Wix lifecycle um, here uh, today. So let's go ahead and talk about Wix 5 being uh, released. Uh, Yay, I just wanna put the green check marks on the screen, really. It was April 5th, 2024. It was the 20th anniversary of Wix being released as open source. Uh, had some people some uh, people from the old days come back and say, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's so cool. So it was cool, it was great. Wix 5 is out. Um, we went through the RCs, fixed a bunch of bugs. Um, a couple late ones that we'll triage today just to note that they were fixed. And then of course some people didn't keep up and we'll probably talk about some issues that come in after Wix 5. So that's Wix 5. It was great. I just want to kind of put a stake in it. Yay. Great. Awesome. Let's put a about... stake in it like a vampire? No, I, uh, I guess. No, it's not dead though. I don't like, all right. Maybe I don't mean stake in it. Like serve it a stake. Congratulations. I don't know. Anyway. It didn't work. Here we go. Wix 6. Let's talk about the schedule for Wix 6. Uh, it doesn't change much. Uh, the RCs were a little compressed this last time due to a number of things. Uh, so we're gonna spread those back out, but I think the two RCs were fine because we weren't getting a lot of additional issues in that time frame. So if we give them a little bit more room uh, between them, that will be better, but this looks like it'll work. So it'll be very similar to the way Wix 5 went. Given the fact that we're on yearly releases and the changes are generally smaller, we seem to be able to pick up and address most of the things. And so far, um, if people do the bugs during, or pick the issues up during the RCs, we're able to respond to them. And the people that don't, well, we don't respond to them during the RCs anyway. So it's not like giving them more time is gonna help at all because people don't seem to pick up the RCs, but we're gonna talk about that in the life cycle. So two RCs, we'll start February 4th, locking everything down and on our march again to April 5th. This time of year also seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of nothing. Like we're not getting mashed up in a whole bunch of you know holidays or anything like that. So we celebrate our holiday of being released as open source. And that seems like a nice kind of date to pin to. So Wix 6 also is changing, simplifying the way that we're doing um, uh, development. We're moving to trunk-based development off of main. So develop branch is, is actually, it's gone now. There's only the main branch. If you go into Wix, there's only one branch, it's main. That's where all your pull requests and all those kinds of things should target. Um, and as we go along and get more towards releases, we can create off uh, release branches off of that to do um, the uh, fixes for that, uh, for those targeted releases. Anyway, this is basically a very simplified release flow without all the extra overhead. A lot of the, if you go read about release flow, they're for really large teams that have to have like all these extra releases. For the amount of work we're doing, a very simplified version that works really well for us. So uh, the end result for everybody is just, hey, there's one branch, it's main, that's all you have to target. I know we've been using develop forever, just think main is the new develop and everything uh, goes from here. All right, so that's the Wix 6 strategy. Um, the Wix 6 repo is almost ready for commits. I'm trying to do a, a fix for versioning to simplify the way that we're doing versioning since I um, found a late issue in Wix 5 that was all due to versions not getting updated. So a ver one version not getting updated. So I wanna solve that and just kind of simplify that part of it. But um, otherwise you can start working, if you wanna start opening PRs against or start working on things for week six, 
you can just know that I want to get this version change in before we start pulling any PRs in um, to that space uh, just to get things cleaned up and a little bit simpler on the build side. It won't affect anybody because nobody's touching that version stuff. It's all tucked away in one little corner. So uh, that's Wix 6. We're all set up, ready to go. So let's go triage some issues and talk about things that we can put into Wix 6 RC1 to be due in February. And Bob, if you refresh the uh, browser, Wix 6 should now be available milestone. Yay. Yay. All right. So uh, let's go over to GitHub and talk about issues. We have a few, a few more than would be nice, but we'll go through them like we always do. 4917 is an old issue that someone brought up with some additional information um, at the bottom from this very, very ancient issue. Like it's been hanging out for a long time. Um, and it's about, man, there's been more common traits in here since I thought. Uh, about service control, if you put them in a different, if you put them in a particular order, it works with file and use dialog. And if you put them in a not correct, not the same order, it doesn't work. So I think it says put the stops before um, anything else. I think it's in the end, anything that stops you want to run before you do anything that does starts. I think I, I, I'd answer. like to get a little bit more comfortable with that is the answer. Right. Um, because obviously there's no documentation that suggests this. Yes. Um, but and if, row if order it's true. If, an installer isn't guaranteed necessarily either. I mean, it seems to work this way. Unlikely it'll change, but. Unless it well, has a sequence column, it's not technically ordered. Right. And, and you know, this is relying on several uh, accidents, right? That, that XML order is the order that things end up in the table. Mm, that too. Which, you know, is the quote unquote natural order for the table when MSI is processing it. So yeah, without it, without some kind of an ordering or sequence column, yeah, there's there's no guarantees. But you know, we could emit them in the right order and just you know hope the IDT import keeps that order consistent. Yeah, we could we could try a little. We could actually try because we're not trying right now. <laughs> it's like it's it's all kind of falling out that way. We could try sure. a little harder based on what has been observed here. And that's kind of what we're dealing with. It's not like it's documented. It's just what's observed. Um, so, yeah, so is this issue really not with standard BA? Oh, you removed it already. Okay. <laughs> it's not with standard yep. BA. Like, it was just tagged randomly or whatever. Um, so, it sounds like this person might be up to trying to take a fix for it. Um, and we could try to see what it, you know, ordering the service control to service control rows, um, should just be a matter of handling the, uh, IR to IDT conversion, right? The, or to the rows information. So it should be possible. Yep. Um, so if this person wants, how about we offer it to them if they want to do yeah. that we can give them a couple hints like where to go look in the code to try to go pull this off yep all right cool uh that'd be great that'd be cool if it if some very subtle behavior in the installer ended up just working for everybody suddenly yeah, it's a nice invisible win for everybody all right cool let's go ahead and give them a shot at taking and picking that up all right 5703, Jacob, this is the one I worried you about. You're here. Thanks for showing up. We love it. We've talked about you twice on this issue, I think. <laughs> this is a sign to you um, because I think you you mentioned something about it. And now I don't know where. <laughs> it was, somehow it got assigned to you, and now we're kind of going, are you still interested in this, or should we go put this up for grabs for and clear you for someone else to go be able to pick it up if they want? That's a pretty, Jake is going to be like, I don't remember any of this because it's from, well, open in 2017, but when was it assigned to Jacob? Oh, here it is. Oh, in 2017. Go back to the Wix meeting back then and think about it if you wanted or review it and be like, oh yeah, that's what I said. So. 
Um, I think we have ways of solving that, right? We can solve the whole question about being able to read it, but this is also certificate. So certificate is in IIS, which is a mistake, honestly. Um, that's just where they got implemented together, but certificate has nothing to do with reading the IIS metadata, um, except for the SSL setting, right? But that's the IIS side of it. Creating and overriding certificates is, happens being the same code base, but it doesn't have the same problems. You can read certificates from non-elevated places and all that kind of good stuff. So it's not as complicated as dealing with IIS. So I get the question is, does Jacob want to take a swing at this in six? Or is he like, ah, uh, not an area that I'm working in anymore. Go ahead and put it back up for grabs, which is, I think that's kind of the question. Uh, I don't know if there's a ref counting. It kind of turns into who wins. I mean, no, it's, I don't know. The ref count is going to be the same across certificates. I, I don't know what the behavior is right now. Does it just skip the certificate? I think it's just an unimplemented feature. Yeah. So it's, I think the behavior right now is it, oh, it always writes the certificate, right? Yeah. So it always sets it. So here you'd want to not set, overwrite it. And then if it's present, and then yeah, you'll just, the ref counting should just work the same. I don't think I have to do that. All right. So I guess we'll leave it and Jacob will put it in uh, RC1. We'll get it out of triage and he can dig into it. And you can leave comments on it and we can chat about it here or in dis in the issue or in discussions as you wish, Jacob. But yeah, that's cool if you want to go jump on that one. So I think we take it out of triage and put it in six V6 RC1. All right. Awesome. All right. So 8094, the second ball condition fails a bundle, even though evaluating true. Um, this is a result of taking bundles out of proc. It was found um, before 5RTM because someone very intelligently picked up the Wix, the 5RC2, and we were able to hunt this down to the burn API always wanting to return ear or wanting to handle error and more data and not e error insufficient buffer. And some APIs want to, more APIs want to return error insufficient buffer than error more data. And it's unfortunate that burn chose error more data, but that's what it did. Um, so it was a matter of fixing a couple cases where error insufficient data, insufficient buffer was returned when error more data needed to be returned. And with those small fixes, it resolved this problem. So, and a test was added to catch this sort of thing um, to help prevent that from happening again. So it was, Good. Anyway, so that was that issue um, fixed in five. So that is fixed in five. And then 8096, the files elements sometimes add the source path into the target directory. Bob, you took care of this one. Hey, what's the side anybody? Interesting. Wait, and no milestone? Oh, all right. Okay. Well, whoever opened the bug just deserves a beat down. Oh, Bob opened it. <laughs> he, he just opened it, took care of it. Problem solved. All right. Anyway, this was fixed in uh, this was fixed in five, um, yep. being found late in RC two based off a discussion. That's right. So anyway, I mean, it was just a bug fix, right? And more tests. Yeah. yeah. So and yeah, lots more tests. Yeah. So cool. Update milestone, and then we will. That's that one. So anyway, a couple bugs that were fixed in RC two. This is what I. You know, that's what the RCs are for. People trying it, finding it, and then we fix them, we add tests, because it usually comes down to, oh, we're missing a test there. We need to add it, and then the uh, fix is generally straightforward. All right, 8101, setting scope to per user results in an unexpected install folder path. I, I think I mentioned this before, Bob. <laughs> the the dream of, of per being able to set per user and having a stall folder be able to switch to being a per user location. Yeah, well, MSI does that, but only when you're using the, the single package authoring yes, thing. Yes, yes. I, I think it, it would be cool. Otherwise, it does not work. So yeah. I, I don't believe that this is um, a bug. Yeah, it's uh, MSI, the MSI behavior is correct. The, the burn aspect is the missing feature in burn to support 
dual mode packages. Yeah, that's, yep. Oh, I see. He's talking about that too. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have to set it yourself. So yeah, I, this is a, this is a missing feature. I, I, I believe like it would be nice if this feature was implemented. Yeah. Um, so, um, are you, were you interested in it? You were less, uh, if I remember correctly, well, you were less interested in it because of so, the problems with per user or something. I think that this, this is a general problem that, that we have to solve, you know, at the burn layer. Um, well, the per, and, per user or machine, yes. But setting a package per user and keeping the install folder as program files folder isn't going to work. You always have to override install folder. Yeah, I don't care about that aspect okay. of it, right. to be honest. That's the, the dual mode packages is a big enough problem all on its own. Um, that said, yeah, sure, we already have the magic you know, program file 6432 folder, so it's a little bit more magic. Yeah. If you're not sure, I, I, want, I would take a shot at trying to set install folder both ways. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it because I'm not sure how hard it is. I can see, can imagine lots of problems, challenges with it. So, um, but I'll take a shot well, at it in six. Okay. I'd like to see it. So if you're not interested, that's why I, I think I'd like to take a shot at it because I'd like to Sorry. see that. Yeah, my, my, my interest in this is mostly on the burn side. Right. But there's an um, issue for that one. Right. Correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that would be great to fix too. I'm, I'm less interested in that one and more interested in this one. So uh, oh, perfect. Uh, there we go. So I'll take this, you can toss this in six RC one. Um, and we'll see if it explodes on me. What was the last time I, Oh, allow same version major upgrades was the last time I said, ah, this should be straightforward. And then it blew up on me. So we'll see. Um, all right. Icon uh, 8104, icon no longer displayed in the bundle burn, bundle window title and window task bar after upgrading to 5.0. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is unfortunate. This would have been nice to have caught in the um, RCs. So I will take this in six. The problem is that now that we're out of proc, the Wix standard BA isn't getting the icon from burn anymore. So it's showing the default one, which is what it's built with and it needs to update its thing. So I'll go ahead and take this. You can put it in six and I'll go look at it there. So doop -a doop but yep. Have to decide how to solve this problem because it worked before because Wix was updating the resources in the uh, stub because it needed to for many reasons. Now it doesn't have to for the BA because that BA doesn't live outside of it, but it, does need to have the right icon. If you build your own custom BA, you can put the right icon in there and you're fine, but with standard BA, it- Well, it still needs the icon on the bundle XE because that's what will but show up in the Explorer. Yeah, that works. That still works. Because, and I saw this is Got just, I, this, through all the automated testing, I just never noticed the the wrong icon being displayed here through all the yeah. automated And I was like, oh. So anyway, um, yeah, this would have been better caught in RCs. Would it, Fix it there. All right, so now I'll take a look at that in six. Um, eight one one five. Yep, override scheduling of finder related products um, is getting hit by the virtual symbols thing. Yeah, we talked about this. So I'll take this as well. Um, yes, overriding these things um, with virtual symbols, you can't mark these as overridable given the fact that they're created specially because they're elements in the schema i debate if that's the right thing to do sometimes but then the intellisense Different does work question. you know so yeah anyway we're, I don't, we're not changing that because it does work the way it should it's just this bug snuck through because well we're missing a test case for this so we'll definitely create a test case in six and go fix it there um 8114. Oh, they're disappearing on me now. Okay. I oh, okay. have to be careful here. Uh, 8114. Failed to update resource bundle after upgrade to V5. Yada, yada, yada. Failed to update resources a bundle detail. Failed to save resource error five. That's access denied. All right. So, seen in Visual Studio, but not in .NET build. Okay. Yeah. So First of all, thanks for the repro repo. Yeah, that's helpful. Is it or is it too? the repo repro? 
Oh, could have been um, here, but whatever. It's easier. I was like, no, what? Oh, yeah. That's nice when I put it. Fill out the template. Anyway. Um, well, it came later. Yeah, yeah. You can edit the template and put your stuff in there. That does That is true. That is um, true. Because then I don't have to scroll uh, down here and find it, things. So. I cloned it and was unable to reproduce the problem. Inside Visual Studio 2? I did .NET Build. I did, I did MS Build. I did Inside Visual Studio. I could not reproduce the problem. And... I wonder, do we have a retry on this? Yeah. We do. All right. So yep. so even in the retry, it was a problem. Well, then, yeah, yeah then that's going to be a problem. Like, even after retrying a few times, it failed. Yeah, something locked it. All right. So, yeah, they need to go look on their machine and figure out what's locking the processing while Visual Studio is running. So, yeah. And, yes, Jacob, clean builds. Nuked builds. Yeah. So. Um, all right. Yeah. This is probably external. I mean, this could happen. We're doing things. And if your machine is locking things up, it'll do that. And I don't know. I mean, we don't have any process to do it. So um, unless they can narrow it down to more information. to Procmon to the rescue. Through. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. I think it's, I think at this point it's Procmon and then we probably send it external and they can um comment back if they track it down to some process that Wix is actually involved with. Um otherwise they could track it down to the process that is creating the problem. Um I would like to blame vi antivirus because I always blame antivirus, but um it's a guilty thing. Often guilty thing. But yeah, that's a problem. Eight one one eight uh tries to install four seven two. Oh Right. This was their BA was failing to start because their NBA host was incorrect. And then they have a correct one. All right. Great. Uh, not a bug. They fixed it in their world. 8125. Default major upgrade is not working if product search is used. Product search? You can use product search in MSI? Product search is an alias for a detect only major upgrade. I didn't know and we did that. <laughs> it's been there since like Wix 2. Wow. So. <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, okay. Uh, that's cool. I didn't know we did that. All right. Yep. I, I know there's a, a bird thing for this. I didn't know we had one for MSI. That's kind of cool. Um, and then it has problems with the default major upgrade. Sure. Well, the default major upgrade is looking for any upgrade rows. Oh, so when it finds any upgrade rows, it's like, oh, you already have one. I'm out. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm I will take this and mm -hmm. and make it a little smarter because okay. detect only upgrade rows are fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially with this. Yeah, even then. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, there are too many features in Wix anyway. And but we'll get a test on product search, and next time I'll be like, yeah, there's a test for it. I'll be like, I didn't know we had that feature. Right. Uh, <laughs> Eight one three two. Errors should be more meaningful. Should, could, it would be nice if they were. All right, we'll be demanding, it's fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, so they're harvesting a bunch of stuff and they get a conflict. They harvest the same file twice into the same directory and they're pointed to the same location uh, with the generated file identifier. Yeah, that's gonna be tricky. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. And it's trickier because there are multiple files elements. Yeah. You would yeah. get a different error message if the duplicates were occurring inside one harvesting. How could that because, happen? Well, it would be a challenge. Okay. No, you, you, you can get duplicate. I mean, you can get duplicate files. Um, but you know, when they're, when they're separate like this, there's mm -hmm. that logic doesn't work. Yeah. The existing logic doesn't work. This is tricky without, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Cause this error message here is a generic error message that will print for any symbol. So it doesn't have mm -hmm. information about all the other pieces and files probably can't detect the collisions because it won't happen until post link. Yeah, this, this right. is not easy to solve. All right, yeah, no, that's a, no. that's a, I agree. A better error message would be nice. 
more detail in the error message would be nice. This is not simple to solve. So, um, yeah, right. Any interest in that one, Bob? Yeah. Um, kind of no. Right. Uh, it, I agree. It, It'd be great. It's not going to be easy. Whenever whoever whoever picks this up, it's not as easy as it might look, um, given all the symbols. Um, and, and the specific error case or the specific use case to me isn't. I just I don't think it's that big a deal. Don't do look that. Look at well, it kind of look at your harvesting. Yeah. If you're doing something that, you know, this was always my biggest concern about harvesting. That is the thing that creates back in 2005, um, and and it remains true to the day. You know, when if you just use globs for everything, this is the kind of problem you risk running into. Anyway, better air mess. I always appreciate This one's going to be a little bit tricky to put in there. So, uh, yeah, up for grabs. Be interesting yep. if someone wants to pick it up. Uh, Zach asked about detect only uh, can get a default. How do you explicitly opt out? And you set the upgrade strategy, right, to none? Or or offer a real major upgrade. Yeah, the right. detect if you want only... no major upgrade, yeah, I get but Right, yeah. Yeah, if you want no major upgrade, that's what upgrade strategy is for. Right. Um, if you want your own... Major upgrade, then yeah. Use the upgrade element or use the upgrade table. Like it's kind of like tiered levels of of complexity and control, which is what right. we're trying to get to now that Wix has the control angle. Now we're trying to dial down the complexity so you can pick less complex solutions and then work your way back. So but it's, it's we're getting there. For, for the common cases. For the common right. case, yes. The 80%, ideally, the 80% case. 80 plus percent. I, I <laughs> You know, one nine complexity. Um, right. Cover cover the common cases as magically as you can, yep. and then make the rest of the stuff easy. Which is different. Like we've not been doing that in the past. We've just been trying to cover our bases in the past. So it, well, I mean, we make every once in a while, every you know, like during three X. Yeah, we had major upgrade was like there were those. yeah major upgrade element was an example of of that. You know, make the common stuff really easy yeah um but it's like the one i can think of <laughs> um yeah well, I mean, there's some more there's some more defaulting stuff mostly but yeah so anyway, that's the answer zach which is about the previous issue not this one this one is yeah going to be interesting to solve um that's five default major um our conflict error should be more me i just did that one eight one three four uh, DTF no longer supports net prior to 462. Yeah, we we put it down to 462 is the last supported one. Although Chris points out that 3.5 SP1 is still supported until 2029. I'll take this. I'll I'll put I'll put the support back for 3.5 for until 2029 because <laughs> I didn't know they were going to keep supporting 3.5 for that long. So, but well, so it's an OS I, component. So I guess, but oh, is it 10 years? But I thought for even the .NET didn't seem like they were getting it. But maybe because the minor versions or the patch versions are backwards compatible. I don't. Anyway, I'll fix it. It'll, we'll go back twenty twenty nine. That's crazy, but sure. <laughs> do we do we lose anything with that? N no, no. It's just a matter of turning it back. It was it was cutting our tail to things that aren't supported anymore because uh, just like we just have to start getting rid of some of this stuff. Um, but it should be just fine. Just turn it back on, back to .NET 3.5, how to target that. All right. 8.1.3.5, UI dialogues not appearing in the taskbar when using Wix internal UI Bootstrap application. Ah, right. So this is the one I thought was the same as the one with the wrong icon, uh, but then they pointed out that, no, the thing to look at is that there's an icon missing from the start. <laughs> it doesn't even there. show up on the taskbar. That's oh. bad. I didn't even know if it showed up on the, uh, did it show up in four? Like, I, did this work in four? I don't know. I I believe so. Yeah. I don't know why it would change. All right. I don't know what would have changed um, in five, but yeah. Uh, but no, of course I'm curious. I am not that curious. So anyway, yeah, that's an interesting bug. Someone could go dig into it if they want. It's, it's funky. <laughs> I don't know how you hide the Windows installer um, icon from there. kind of funky anyway so 
Uh, yeah. Someone could pick that one up. Uh, I don't care much about the internal UI Blue Sharper. It's kind of a mess the way it's all designed and implemented. So it's like, yeah. Someone wants to start fixing the issues in there. There's a few to go. Um, so we'll have to go figure that out. All right. So 8135 could go up for grabs. I'm assuming you're, unless you want it, Bob, unless that was your curiosity. It was like, oh, I want to go figure out. No, sorry. My curiosity was limited to the. Did it work in four? Reproed in four. Yeah. 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 All right. 8138, Rick Standard BA browse fo folder defaults to my documents instead of a predefined path or its parent. Hmm. All right. Cool. I could see it defaulting to that. That seems like a reasonable thing if someone wanted to do the work to do that. I could see that. I okay. suppose it could open. The problem is the, the browse button doesn't have any connection to the um, to the edit control. Oh, so it won't be able to pick what you edit there. It could at it, least pick whatever install folder was before, I guess. I, I mean, sorry, yeah, the, all, that's all I'm saying. The yeah. the it, it would require an explicit look from the the click behavior of the browse button to go look at the the otherwise unaffiliated edit control um, and and look at what yep. directory it sure. it should be pointing to. Yeah. Yeah. Quick standard BA behavior. I can see it. I don't think anybody would complain if it changed. So you could take it in six. If someone want to work on that. Yeah. All right. Cool. And that's 8138. And I think we're actually going to go through clean on all of our triage issues, right? We're not keeping any of these around. Um, we're not going to keep the proc explorer bundle resource, failed to update resource uh, 8114 here. We're not going to keep that around, right? It's just be like, yeah, this is probably external. Feel free to open this again if you Procmon shows that Wix is doing this to itself. I think so. Yeah, I don't know what else. What else to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If we have retries, so I, I mean, yeah. At some point, you're like, yeah, gosh, it's you need to get there. So I, we could retry until oblivion. Um, if something's locked, it something's locked. It Procmon will hopefully Procmon will find it. Bob's good at that. I'm not as good at it. All right, all right, great. We're actually going to exit with nothing left to triage for. Ne I, we're not carrying over anything for triage, which is great. So we're not going to talk about future. Normally, I would talk about we want to talk about v future and start pulling those things out and organizing them either into six or kick them out to up for grabs. Uh, but because we have, I want to talk about the whip life cycle. We're not going to talk about that this time. We'll talk. Of, we'll do a v future triage next time because we won't have any carryover issues, so that should work out uh, pretty well. Yay, that makes me happy. All right, so let's talk about the Wix lifecycle. Wix lifecycle being basically the same thing we're talking about like .NET Framework. .NET Framework lifecycle for .NET 351 is in Windows, which means it gets 10 years, so it's good till 2029. Uh, yeah, we don't have lifecycles like that. Um, so uh, let's talk about what uh, lifecycles are in which are now planned. And we don't, we've never been explicit about this. So this is kind of like the first time kind of nailing it down. Um, but we really should have been about more specific about this. So uh, there are two paths you go down. I, I've been trying to be very consistent about this because I know sometimes Fire Giant customers are watching these or keeping up. Welcome if you are a Fire Giant customer. Hey, at this point, if you're watching this, you can turn this video off and go back to work because the rest of this doesn't apply to you. You have a support contract, your bugs are fixed based off of all that support contract stuff. So fire chat customers, you can, you can move. For everybody else that's not paying for this, you're just like hanging out and having fun in the community and using Wix, that's cool. Here's the life cycle. And you've seen this coming together as we've been doing these last few releases. So bug fixes, not security things. And we can talk about security things because we had a number of them in the last quarter, which was well, that's what that really helped crystallize this problem for us. Bug fixes, it, regressions reported in a release candidate, you're going to see us have attempt to fix them very, very hard. And if we can't, it's because we want the change and we should document the workaround. So if, you know, hey, so during the RCs, get your bug fixes in. We're going to try very hard uh, to fix anything, any regressions in that. After the release, as you have seen here, most issues are going to go up for grabs uh, 
for some future version that people want to work on it. Um, the Bob and I took a few of these because we're like, yeah, that's interesting to us, and we'll put them in six, and it'll go in a future release. Bob and I can then decide if we hit some critical issues or some customer bug fixes, we can backport them back to like the last major release or whatever um, for things that are really important. But that's not the way we're going to do things generally, right? That's not the way to expect it. You can say, uh, if you open an issue, you probably should be prepared for it to go up for grabs and get fixed sometime in the future. Um, so that's, so the takeaway here is if you're just using Wix, test the release candidates, make sure that there's no regressions in there that block you, right? Make sure that your scenario, like for example, if you use product search, which I forgot about, we didn't have a test for, we broke it, right? Well, make sure you get that caught in the RC. If you open it in the RCs, we've been like, oh, well, ah, we'll get it fixed. Otherwise, that's ah, bad enough, we'll get it fixed in the next version. So. That's an example. So the takeaway from this part of bug fixes is be testing the release candidates and getting your issues opened. Security fixes, we take seriously because you know we want everybody to have the window, a bigger window so that they can absorb change and move forward to stay current. Um, and we don't want people to be like, oh, you have security release and you're like trapped and you have to do super emergency stuff. So. The way that we're doing this is it's essentially 10 months after the N plus one release. I struggled with ways to represent that. That means that on a yearly cadence that we're on right now, you have like 22 months of, we're just gonna fix all security fixes in it. So best example is the one we have um, like uh, right now, Wix 5 released on April 5th, 2024. That was just almost two weeks ago. That means that we will be taking care of Wix 4 security releases through February 5th, 2025, all right? So that's 10 months from when Wix 5 released. And this will become a very regular cadence for us. So the takeaway here is that you wanna upgrade about every 18 months. Um, so, it, and I say 18 months, I mean, it's up to you, but 18 months means you hit like September, so you're not like in the holidays. <laughs> Um, you could wait for like 20 months and then you're like in January or 21 months and then you're in January, but something like that. So the takeaways are uh, from this, um, you'll want to be thinking about every 18 months picking up the next release uh, or moving to the next release of Wix. Of course, you want to be testing the uh, RC before that to make sure that you can move to it in that time frame. So that means we have dates for the end of life. Wix 3 is a little different because we felt that it had been out there for so, 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 so long. Um, and its release system, its acquisition mechanism, whatever you wanna call it, is very old style, um, AKA you install an MSI on your build machine and do all that kind of stuff that we said last February that we'd keep it for a year. So that happens to be February 6, 2025, that V3, we're just like cutting it off out here. Security fixes, we're done, V3's done, we're out, it's it's a huge burden, we're done. Um, and V4, funnily, goes out of service the day before that. Um, and because we now have the new acquisition model where it's much easier to pick up new releases and move forward with them, uh, you're looking at uh, February 5th, 2025. And that means that uh, Wix 5 should be out of service in February 5th, 2026, if Wix 6 goes out on schedule on April 5th, 2025. So, Hopefully now you can be like, oh, okay, it has a very regular rhythm to it and um, pretty simple to follow along. And you can plan in your schedules of as you're just consuming Wix, you're like, cool, we just have to stay, kind of keep rolling along with all the changes. And I think that's my last, oh, so, right. This is the key takeaways from here to think about everywhere. Um, if you're a customer, Go see your support contract. They have much longer time frames than all these. Like they're they're enterprise type things. You want stability for a long time. That's what support contracts get you. Um, consumers, you're not paying for anything, so be sure to test those release candidates and be sure to stay on top of every um, the upgrades every 18 months uh, because otherwise, if a security thing comes out, the answer will be you need to upgrade and you don't. I, I don't think you want to be doing an upgrade to a new version of Wix and trying to get the security fix at the same time. That's like, it's a lot harder than you'll want to do. Um, so you'll want to roll 
uh, that. So these are kind of the key takeaways for everything. And, and again, 18 months isn't a hard line. That's just the one that I would put out there because it means you get to avoid holidays. And all of this allows us to line up. Um, all right, you know, I, I'll, it allows us to line up a whole schedule. I'll show the schedule. I wanna start making sure I get questions, comments, cause I've seen something. So go ahead and start typing your questions and comments and I'll bring up the overall schedule, which hopefully then makes it, you'll be able to see why these things line up the way they do and how they work for us, especially given our history of the last quarter. Um, would it be possible to have Heatwave sooner for RC testing via Visual Studio? Uh, yeah, it's definitely our goal to have that ready, um, Heatwave ready sooner. Uh, we've made changes in the last one to make that work better. Um, we were dealing with a bunch of security fixes all at the same time, which really sucked up a lot of time. So that tripped up the uh, heat wave work a little bit there. Definitely our goal. Also, we're today. at the whim of Visual Studio, which isn't always a pleasant position to be in. Yeah, we, we there are definitely problems with 17.9 breaking 17.8 features and having to undo a lot of work to go back to make 17.8, which was a, 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 Yeah, there's a whole lot of behind the scenes stuff that went there too, but the, it was, it was, we were in release hell, like for the last for the last uh, five months. It's not been fun. It's just been way, 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 way too much work. So this is the schedule going forward. If I did this one backwards, it looks worse than this with all the things we were doing. Um, but this gives us the. This is kind of like I took all the dates that we've talked about so far and shoved them onto one slide here, so you could kind of see how they start working out. Um, February fourth. Uh, Wix 6 RC1 comes out. That's when you want to start, you know, picking up Wix 6 builds and make sure they're working for you. February 5th, uh, V4 is end of life. So the day after that, V4 locks down, gone. We don't worry about it anymore. February 6th, V3 locks down. That cuts out a huge uh, security surface area for us to lock down and send away. So that gets locked down and sent away. Um, and then like a little bit after that, March 4th, uh, we have RC2 that comes out, takes all the fixes from that we get all the bug fixes and any regressions fixes, things like that, gets that in RC2. And then uh, on April 5th, we have Wix 6 come out and then a ye 10 months after April 5th, February 5th, 2026, V5 would be end of life. The thing here that you'll notice hopefully is that we end up not having to uh, have three different releases of Wix all in the mix at the same time. We have two technically there's a you know when you get past february 4th 5th and 6th so by the time you hit february 7th we only are dealing with wix 5 and wix 6 for security uh fixes which is much more doable than the three that we were trying to do um for during this last quarter it was just it was crazy so the, that's how these dates kind of line up they all hook together and if you look at our schedules it just helps everything smooth out so that it minimizes the insanity unless something happens on February 4th, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but I'm out sick that day. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going on vacation for a week and then we'll be back after those days. No. Uh, so there's, um, so if you look at our schedule, this is what lines up to just make it more reasonable for the stuff that we're doing out here um, for free. So for customers, again, you know, we have support contracts, we have all the delivery and the communication channels and all that stuff for customers. Uh, but for everybody else that's just kind of picking it up and using it, this is what you can expect. And hopefully this gets a little more stable. So now you know what to expect. You're like, oh, okay, this is how it's working. And now Wix releases are easier to pick up. So I can just change the version number and roll forward and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, that is our plan. I've been babbling on here, trying to create space if there's any other questions. Um, and I don't see more questions. So I, I'll go back to the question. I don't know. Should I stay on this slide or stay on questions, comments, questions, comments, other things going on. Anyway. So, uh, it is now on me to write up this, uh, life cycle into a form and then post it in the appropriate places. Um, I'm finding all those places, wixfullset.org, probably in a discussion and pin it to the top discussions of what I'm thinking. So when people are asking questions, we could be like, well, here's the version you should be on and here's how you should be working about it and those kinds of good things. Um, so information will be coming about this today, tomorrow, um, depending on the time frame it takes to, 
take all these slides and turn them into uh, typed words. I did not pre-bake that. Um, and that's that. So I guess if there's no questions, comments, I'll you do the usual thing. I think we come back in two weeks, which will still be April, just barely, if we do the same thing in two weeks and uh, meet on April 30th. That sound right? Yeah, there's Bob. No, oh, works no. for me. Okay. Yeah, I was expecting anything? No? Okay. Interaction. So I could object, but you could, object. You could agree. You could be like, that oh. sounds good. I agree. Especially when he leaves that we could meet in two weeks. Does that sound good? Yes. All right. We'll be back in two weeks. Um we will do triage and we will be talking about the V future stuff. So like some of the things that we're thinking about doing um that aren't just bug fixes. Um, looking into Wix 6 things that we want to bring forward. So I think that's it. Um, April 30th, two weeks from now, same time, same place. And we'll do triage and future issues. Triage, basically. All right. Uh, Wix 6 is out there. Feel free to uh, start uh, looking at the code. Perhaps Wix 5. No, Wix 5 is already out there. We're, Wix 6 is available for people to start developing in it. Um, oh. Sorry, Wix 6 is available. You can start you know, getting your uh, features and things like that into Wix 6 and talk about them, those kind of good things. So on that note, we'll be back in two weeks, and we'll uh, do this again. All right. Till then, you guys, take it easy. Bye. Bye.